Hello there, this is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake, and this is the 2021 Toyota Supra 3.0 Premium. Toyota introduced the Supra for 2020 last year, and they haven't made a lot of changes, but they have made a few tweaks for 2021 that are very exciting to the right buyer. The biggest, most exciting upgrade they've made is they've added white Toyota Supra decals to the front brake calipers if you get the premium or A91 trim levels. I'm kidding. It's not the most exciting thing. The most exciting thing is that if you buy the three liter inline six cylinder version of this car, they added 47 horsepower and some extra torque to bring it fully in line with its Z4 three liter sibling from BMW. If you're not looking to spend three liter Supra money, they also introduced a two liter turbocharged four cylinder version of this car that is now available for the 2021 model year. And before we get into too much more about this 2021 Supra, please take a second, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to turn that bell on so that you get notifications when we review more cars. We have a lot more exciting things coming down the pike, and we would love to share them with all of you. Now, with all that said, let's talk about what is new for 2021 with this Supra, and then we'll get into how it is to actually drive on the road. All right, so while some people might be excited about the upgraded script on the brake calipers of the 2021 Supra, the big deal if you're buying a 2021 model year is actually what's under the hood should you choose the three liter inline six. And I say should you choose because Toyota has been able to offer a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder if three liter super money is just a little too high for you. It's still gonna be a potent engine. It's paired to the same ZF automatic eight speed transmission and generally you're gonna have a very similar driving experience just with less power and less torque. But the real sweetheart of the Supra, especially given its own heritage and the fact that it comes from a BMW lineage is the inline six cylinder engine that is under the hood of this particular Supra. And for 2021, like I said, this is the upgraded model with more power and more torque. The way the story goes is that this car is a collaborative effort from BMW and Toyota. This is very heavily based on the current generation BMW Z4. And when the Z4 and Supra both came out, I think there was a little bit of a desire for BMW to have the edge on power and torque in that Z4 if buyers chose the three liter inline six. So Toyota had to make do with a less powerful version of the B58 inline six cylinder and it made 335 horsepower. I thought it was a great engine. I thought power to weight was fine. The car was plenty quick and it's a, a generally lovely car to drive otherwise. But BMW and Toyota worked out whatever they had to work out for the 2021 model year. And now the 2021 Supra with the inline six cylinder is making just as much power and torque as any other B58 powered vehicle. That includes the BMW Z4, BMW 3 Series, and a few other BMWs in the lineup. And that is to say it makes 382 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque. It's up by 47 horsepower compared to the 2020 model year. And that was not accomplished just by adding more boost. The engine actually got different exhaust manifolds and different pistons, which messed with the compression of the engine, and then Toyota retuned the engine to get that 382 horsepower figure. So those are the updates to the B58 engine. Beyond that, in the engine bay, Toyota was able to offer two little aluminum braces that go from the strut tower to kind of the core support area of the car. Those allegedly come off the Z4. In any case, they added them here for a little extra stiffness and stability. They also worked on the suspension and the steering just a little bit. They also changed the exhaust just a hair. If you remember the 2020 model, especially in sport mode, it had this really crazy pop and burble tune, which at this point has become a little bit of a meme in its own right. Toyota's tuned that down just a hair for the 2021. It still is there. It is not gone entirely, but it's a little more civilized if you're looking to drive around in sport mode and not have everyone in the world stare at you for your exhaust. They'll still stare because of the way the car looks. I think it is fabulous in person, but you won't sound like an annoying 23 year old who just got their first pop and burble tune and wants to show off to everyone in a downtown area. Now with all that said, the rest of the Supra is more or less the Supra. So let's hop behind the wheel and see how these changes for 2021 have made this Supra to drive. All right, so driving the 2021 Toyota Supra 3 liter. This is more or less the same car as the 2020 Supra. The biggest deal is that engine upgrade. 47 horsepower is nothing to sneeze at. In my NA Miata days, 47 horsepower would have felt like the world to add to that car. In this Supra, with the outgoing 3 liter that made 335 horsepower, this one 
is certainly quicker. The old car I never thought felt particularly slow, but uh, Toyota sent it over to see how it is. Like I said, there's also a two liter turbo four that makes, I think, 255 horsepower if you just are not really looking to spend this kind of money for the three liter models. But in any case, this is in sport mode right now. We've got a nice clear on-ramp here. So we'll go ahead and give it the beans down the on-ramp and uh, see how this thing feels. <laughs> that is insanely quick. I think Toyota claims something like a mid three seconds, zero to 60. And even from a roll, I was doing about 25 miles an hour there when I, I really stood on it. And it just wants to go. It is very, very quick. It, it doesn't need more power. I have a friend who bought a 2020 Supra and he promptly took it and tuned it. And it produces more power than this one does, even though his is, you know, all through the aftermarket, not through Toyota factory. But uh, these cars don't weigh that much. This weighs about 3,400 pounds. It's just, I think, quite a bit of power and it gets put down through that ZF eight-speed automatic. You're really not left wanting for more. It makes plenty of power from just off idle all the way to the red line. The red line in this car is 7,000 RPM and you know, a lot of turbocharged cars, you feel that power distinctly drop off at a certain point. Not so in the Supra. It pulls very hard all the way to 7K, at which point if left to its own devices, the transmission will upshift on its own. Put the transmission selector in manual mode. It will listen to your commands and it will respond. It will not upshift and downshift for you, which I really like. And like I said, Toyota did make some tweaks to the exhaust in this car. It does have an active exhaust. So when you push the sport button, it does open the flapper or whatever it does to make the exhaust sound quite a bit louder, quite a bit deeper in tone. And uh, they made it a little less obnoxious, but it's still obnoxious in sport mode if you're, if you're one of those people that likes to just, you know, give it half throttle in first gear over and over in a downtown area. It will still burble and pop and crackle as much as you want and, uh, and give you plenty of dramatic noise. It's just a little, a little more subtle. The other things that Toyota did to the 2021 Supra were with suspension tuning and with steering tuning. Um, I can't really say I notice a huge difference. I will say I'm spending much more time on the highway in this Supra than I did in the 2020 Supra. Uh, in this case, I took the car down to my college town and we hit a tremendously fun back road that is a few hours outside Washington, D.C. So that obviously involved a couple hour drive to and from to get to the road and then up and over the mountain on that road itself. My biggest impressions driving this car up and over the mountain were just of the complete lack of drama here. In my last Supra video with the 2020 Supra, I actually drove two 2020 Supras back to back. I took one of them out at Virginia International Raceway and got to spend time with it on a racetrack, which was super great but a lot of people aren't gonna be driving these things on tracks, at least not as often as they will be on the street where they might find some fun roads. And the interesting thing with the Supra on a really fun, really twisty road is that it just, it was just very composed and very good at it. It's got a pretty short wheelbase. It's about 99 inches long. I mean, it was just so easy to attack the road and be very well within my limits and the car's limits and just be comfortable the whole time. When I was in college driving this road, I had a 1995 Mazda Miata, which was modified a little bit, but it was a low power car. You had to really work it to keep the speed and the power and the revs up. And then regardless, it felt a little unsettled trying to be pushed as hard as you really wanted to push it through some of those tighter switchback sort of turns. The Supra with everything in sport mode, whether you have the transmission in manual or automatic mode, just eats it all up. The brakes experienced no fade. The road I was on is notorious. If you ride the brakes too long or use them too much, you will experience fade. You have to use your gears to help with downshifting and using engine braking. Again, very nice thing with the Supra, you can leave it in manual mode and you can use the paddles and it will stay in whatever gear you want. So it's very easy to keep it completely under control and save those brakes. If you're gonna take this thing out on a racetrack, I would recommend putting different brake fluid in the car at a bare minimum. I think the pads themselves are fine, but fluid is always good to have a little higher temperature rated fluid uh, if you're going to be tracking the car, but for back road use, no worries at all. 
Steering wise, again, it was just drama free. I think there's decent feel here. You know, every electronic system, people are gonna complain that there's, oh, there's not enough feel, not enough road feel. This is pretty good. I really don't have a lot of complaints about the Supra and I, I really liked the 2020 Supra and the 2021 is just the same car, a teeny, teeny, teeny bit more refined, obviously with all that extra power. I will say the suspension in this car is generally pretty good. I think you could live with it as an everyday only car sort of daily driver. It is compliant enough in the normal or comfort mode and then it stiffens up enough in sport mode but not egregiously so. It will not shake your fillings out or anything. But the one thing I've noticed is that you do get some lateral movement and I don't know if that's just from the tires on this particular car or if it's something to do with the suspension. It just feels a little unsettled if you're on kind of rougher highways that are not super fresh asphalt, uh, but not the worst thing in the world. As far as general ride comfort in here, this is a big enough car that I feel comfortable driving it on the highway, doing a cross country road trip. It doesn't feel too small. It doesn't feel too compromised to serve as a highway car. And a bunch of outlets have done long highway drives. They've measured the fuel economy and they've seen 30 plus miles a gallon out of the inline six. So that is really, really awesome that you've got 380 plus horsepower and you can, you know, do real highway driving and uh, have a pretty decent, you know, range and fuel economy out of it. As far as other things in this car for the sake of creature comforts on a road trip, I think the seats are great. They don't have extendable thigh bolsters, which I really miss. That's a BMW hallmark. So I was kind of hoping that they would do it, but in both the 2020 and the 21, they didn't do it. The seats are comfortable. Otherwise though, you've got adjustable bolsters on the sides and you've got adjustable lumbar that comes in and out and up and down uh, against your back. So that's pretty nice for the sake of a road trip. Unlike any BMW ever, 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 there are two cup holders here and you can see they do work to hold a cup of coffee. They work for drinks even bigger than this really appreciate the nod to some practicality there. As far as other items that are not exclusive to the 2021, just things I've noticed spending more time in this one in particular, I do think road noise and, and general sound level with the windows up is pretty good. You get a lot of tire noise more than anything. This car comes on Michelin Pilot Super Sports and they're just a little bit noisier of a tire, but not a super loud car inside for what it is, for the type of car and uh, that's all fine and good. When you have the windows down, there is still that wind buffeting effect that Toyota has not managed to fix. Um, it's really, to me, a little unacceptable for a car that costs as much as this does. These are you know, easily into the $50,000 range, but it only happens from a certain range of speed. Unfortunately, it's a range of speed that many people find quite pleasant with the windows down, which is about 45 to about 55, 60. So. All right, and that is it for this review of the 2021 Toyota Supra 3 liter premium. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, if you like what we're up to, please take a second, subscribe to the channel, like this video. Be sure to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss anything coming down the pike. As always, we can also be found on Facebook and Instagram at OutMotorsports. And please head over to OutMotorsports.com to check out the written article that will be on our website very shortly after this video goes live. Until next time, please stay safe, be well, and we'll see you again soon.